Um, the subtopic I'm going to talk about now, I think it's a very important and very critical topic. Um, of all the hormones that are given um, in the anti-aging movement, it is probably growth hormone that has the most potent uh, preserving effects on your use. It even has a reversing effect on aging. So this um, hormone is so important that it should be provided to the patient who's in deficiency. But the big problem we have is that we have invented laboratory ranges, reference ranges. And when you look at statistically those laboratory reference ranges, 95% of the patients are between references, whatever age they are, and only 2.5% of the patients are under and 2.5% above. And so those reference ranges are not optimal health ranges, they're just statistical reference ranges, and it's not sufficient to declare a patient normal and healthy for his growth hormone if that person has IGF-1 levels between the two reference ranges. For growth hormone um, check, it is, we check growth hormone mostly in blood on IGF-1 and on its binding protein because growth hormone is not, uh, um, you cannot find it during the day. I don't know if it works here. And um, so, well, ooh, <laughs> I've got testosterone here. So um, it is very important um, to know that the diagnosis of testosterone is partially based on an IGF-1 and an ratio on an IGF-PP3. If the IGF-1, which is a hormone produced by the liver on the um, growth hormone um, 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 influence, uh, the IGF-1 is a very stable value. The growth hormone cannot be seen during the day except in women in very low uh, levels. It's in the three first hours of the sleep that we make a lot of growth hormone. So I'm going to sh show you that people can be sick or uh, are unhealthy with IGF-1 lab uh, values within the reference ranges, and here's the hard scientific data about that. So several studies show pathology for patients inside the reference ranges. If they are low normal or just the average value, it often is not sufficient and they have an increased risk of disease. And in generally, when you have a curve with age, a person will have a high IGF run around uh, age um, 20, 15, 20, 25, and then it will slowly go down. That means that growth hormone activity goes down with age. And uh, reference ranges uh, have values between uh, 400, for instance, and 150 when you're young, but then when you get older, the reference ranges progressively decrease. And uh, that's not a healthy adaptation of the reference ranges. People stay the same height, the body is about the same size, um, they have about the same tissues, the same volume, they need the same levels they had at 25 years. And if it goes down, uh, people get unhealthy. And here's the data that shows it. So generally what we'll see is that progressively, the lower the values go, the more disease there is. For mortality, for instance, here are two studies where you see that if you are within the lower half of the reference ranges, so you're well within the reference range, but then the lower half, you have increased mortality um, in the patients with cancer and in patients with liver cirrhosis. So people who have liver insufficiency and they have a low IGF-1, who is not very low, just below the average value, they are increased risk of dying. So you should be in the upper half of the reference range. Here's another um, test where it sees that you, the three-year survival in patients with cirrhosis, again, is uh, not good when they're below the medium value of IGF-1 of their age category. And if you have a heart failure, uh, no, if you are below the 140 nanograms per milliliter, which is about the average value in uh, people around 40 years to 50 years of age, uh, you have an increase, a doubling of the risk of heart failure. So even the mind is not so good if in your lower half of the reference range, the mini mental state examination in elderly uh, um, um, subjects is not as good. So for, if you want to keep a healthy mind, you should be in the upper half of the reference range. 
of the laboratory values. Here again, other mortality tests in uh, renal cancer, hemodialysis, chronic uh, heart failure, uh, increased mortality if you are uh, at lower values within the reference ranges. And here again, uh, if you're in the lower um, 10 lower 10 percentiles, lower 10 percent, still, so here you can be still in, within the reference ranges, increased risk of dying if you have heart uh, failure and you're a man. So, and there are many studies like that. Look at stroke patients. Stroke patients, if they have a value that is under the reference range, uh, of, under the average value of the reference range, so you, they have um, increased risk of death. In fact, every 20 nanograms per milliliter decrease, uh, are, um, th they have an increased risk of death after stroke, decrease of the IGF-1.